oxygen based oxide nanostructures for several applications. Hi, I am K. Mohan Raj. I am coming from Government Arts College, Thirunamalai. I am working on nanomaterials for device applications. B. Poojita, I am from Iser Bhopal. I am working on uh, magnetism and superconducting properties of Mosler alloys. I am Jumanat, coming from University of Calicut, Kerala, working on biologically important things. I am Subhlakshmi from SSN College of Engineering and working on nanometers. I am S. Titrambalam, under the guidance of Dr. Hubert Jo from University of Kerala. Uh, I am working in density functional theory. Friends, first I would like to thanks to the organizer to giving us an opportunity to speak something whatever we learned from this school. So our presentation title is Synthesis of Nanomaterials and Single Crystals Heterostructures and their Characterization. This title tells us that we prepare single crystals and also nanostructures. Then we try to prepare heterostructures. Hopefully they can give better result and then we, whatever we get as a technique can be used for the um, preparation of those materials. So these are my outlines, first little introduction about the crystal and about the nanomaterials, then my objectives, then methods of crystal growth and synthesis of nanomaterials, then characterization techniques, <coughs> then result and discussion, finally conclusions and reference. Introduction. How a crystal forms? A crystals are generally formed due to the change of, due to the change of matter. Generally crystals are the pillar of modern technology. Without crystal, there would be no uh, photonic industry or no electronic industry and no fiber body communication. However, you can divide the crystal into three categories mainly. One is single crystal, another is polycrystal and one is quasi crystals. Single crystal can be defined as a homogeneous body consisting of a Three-dimensional periodic arrangement of atoms or molecules or ions. However, polycrystals, a very large number of tiny crystallites. And quasi crystal in any crystal in which 3D lattice periodicity is absent. But I want to emphasize on single crystal. Particularly single crystals, growth of single crystal is very difficult than polycrystals. And since single crystals have no grain boundaries, phase pure, so uh, it, is, it has some unique properties which gives uh, better result for any type of device application to improve, we can improve the device application if we prepare the good quality single crystals. And we can see also, according to the International Union of Crystallography, if materials produce diffraction spores, then we can also call this is single crystalline. Rather than if we get the concentric rings, then we can call this is polycrystalline. So here we can understand about the single crystals, we can improve the performance of a material if the material should be single crystalline. However, we learn from several lectures that nanomaterial, that size of the device should be large if we use single crystals. Rather than if we use nanomaterials, then size of the material should be reduced. Because in nanomaterials, due to high surface area, high selectivity, high sensitivity, so it gives uh, lesser device and it gives high performance. So now I want to show you uh, this is our concept that I want to show you how nanomaterials is, has high selectivity and which can be uh, used in also in gas sensing applications. How nanomaterials are high selectivity. I want to give a basic example which is uh, to, according to us. I am taking here a five month baby and it is a five years old baby, old child. So I tell them to select any of one. So I put their family in front of them. Then I tell them this five, uh, five months baby and also this. We want to tell them to select any of you from the, uh, sorry, from their families. What happens in case of this five years old baby? In his mind, he, he since he knows everybody little bit, little bit, so in his mind, it comes to his father, to his mother, to his brother, to his sister, all of them. But in case, of, in case of this one, whatever you tell anything, whatever, he only select to her mother. He only come to her mother because he is very much selected. He is very much sensitive. He is very much ideal to her mother, very much concentrated. So if we call this is nano, this is maybe a great device. So now 
in the basic concept you can understand the role of nanomaterials. So now our science still now does not reach that if we take a sensor device, any sensing device, our, we know ant, an ant what can did? An ant can uh, uh, means uh, uh, mild distance sugar crystal can be detected in its brain. So you can see, imagine an ant is a house small device. He can detect the sugar crystal from the mild mild distance. However, our science does not reach to that. And also medical science tells us that in our breath, we are always on nitric oxide, hydro, uh, hydrogen, carbon dioxide. These are were always in our breath. They are available. However, if any of one percentage is higher, then we can know the disease, the patient. If acetone is higher in our breath, then we can say the patient is diabetes. If benzoic acid or any benzene are detected from our mouth, then we can tell this is a lung cancer. And if any ammonia we detected, then we call renal disease. And if uh, nitric oxide can be detected, then we call asthma patient. But however, our uh, means we have not uh, uh, prepared still now um, uh, the device of uh, sensor, the small device of sensor so that you can detect. However, uh, uh, some reports are there, but uh, they are very large device. So, uh, we can enhance the performance of the device by maybe by preparing heterostructures, we can small the device that if we prepare, suppose if we prepare a heterostructure like a single crystal, nano, a single crystal device substrate on that we will put the nanomaterials. So, we think, we believe, we hope our performance becomes better, we can maybe select those things. So, here we can understand that about the nanomaterials. And so, in nanomaterials, also I have already talked that this ET has also shown some physical and chemical properties. And size, shape, crystal structure, and composition of the nanostructure plays crucial role in case of potential applications. So, it is shows various applications like photocatalyst. We already, uh, that lecture we already got the waste water treatment. Photo, what is photocatalyst? We have the land there. Uh, wastewater treatment. What is photocatalyst? We know all about photosynthesis. What is happening in photosynthesis? In photosynthesis, plant that chlorophyll in the presence of sunlight, it breaks down. It breaks down uh, that water and carbon dioxide to glucose and oxygen. In photocatalyst, down, yes, thank you. In photocatalyst, our material breaks down in the presence of sunlight or in the presence of light, it breaks down water and any organic dyes, those are harmful organic dyes or any arsenic, those are present in water, waste waters. It breaks down any organic chemicals to, organic chemicals to, <coughs> I need water. <coughs> to harmless water, which is not only helpful for environment, but also for aquatic lives. You got this? Oh, yes, okay. So also thin film solar cells, we can enhance the performance of thin film solar cells by making heterostructures, heterojunctions, and then gas sensors and solid state deprivation devices. Now, my objectives comes, a single crystal growth by various methods, hydrothermal synthesis of nanomaterials, characterization techniques for analyzing the properties of functional materials, then synthesis of nanomaterials or single crystals, heterostructure for device applications. Uh, but now, uh, I mean, so, uh, since we have a 20 dose, uh, 20 dose uh, uh, there, so that we cannot mention the particular uh, materials because uh, it is not possible for literature service. That's why we are mentioning all that, what we learned. So, for a crystal growth, what do you mean by crystal growth? It is nothing but a phase transformation from solid to solid or solid to or liquid to solid or gas to solid. Uh, so, many methods are there, like growth from solution, growth from melt, and growth from vapor. In the solution growth, uh, we uh, like these bars, I am not want to, these are written. So, I want to emphasize on growth from melt. Growth from melt, that is, uh, one is Bridgman technique, another is I will emphasize on Bridgman technique and Chokralski technique. One is fifteen minutes and already ten is over, seven slides only have gone. Yeah, really, lecture is very really good, impressive, no problem about that. But others also have to get the time. Right? So, sir, uh, what I mean, so I will care about. I mean, so I. I don't know okay. that. Everybody has, everybody has. Okay, sir. 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 Okay, sir
No sir, I, no sir, I mean, sir, I mean, sir, actually sir, I can speak also two hours. <laughs> but, yes sir, yes sir, I skip some slides, sir. So, yes, yes. So, Thank you. Sir. Okay, so uh, for growth from melt, that is mainly uh, uh, here. This is a technique of uh, Bridgman, and this is a technique of Chokolowski. And generally, we know that uh, very uh, Bridgman is still a very old technique, but nowadays every industry uses uh, uh, for growing silicon by using Chokolowski method. And the only the reason is this: uh, means silicon is a metal to expand solidification. Here is nothing but, uh, uh, and I uh, these techniques I. I want to this thing that crucible is fact, crucible is one of the important factor. Crucible should be what type? Now for if we want to grow metal, then crucible should be metal oxide. If we want to grow metal oxide, then crucible should be metal. So, and uh, I don't want to. Uh, so, okay, this is the drawbacks of a Chokrasky method. Uh, high test paper sample cannot be grown, and uh, the, the Bridgman method also since in, uh, contact, so mechanical phase occurs on that. And also, nanomaterials can be synthesized by various techniques, physical load and chemical load. I want to emphasize on hydrothermal method. It is a very low cost technique, uh, this is uh, nothing but uh, like a pressure cooker. In hydrothermal temperature, in hydrothermal, what is happening? We get good crystallinity at low temperature. So now, we, so now we can prepare the single crystals and, uh, uh, and the nanomaterials by using those methods. Then we characterize the samples, various techniques. Uh, those are the various techniques, we can characterize the samples. And first, yes, okay. So first, what is that? Any material, if, when we synthesize, our first technique is that we have to know the structural property of those materials. The structural property is nothing but the crystal structure and phase analysis, which can be studied by X-ray diffraction. In X-ray diffraction, what is happening? Now, actually, we learned here from the school that uh, uh, that a read -built analysis of a full proof software we learned and also how to draw our experimental data to crystal structure, which is helpful, not which is very much helpful for research field, so that we can do any theoretical study uh, uh, and uh, experimental, we can match this. So we take a data of uh, this is uh, actually the power dioxide diffraction. I have take a data of this, and uh, we have fitted the high resolution image with this, and also uh, we we but we skip these things. If we uh, means click here, uh, means our output data we can see. But uh, after the, we taking the Wyckoff position and. Yes, uh, so that we, uh, so we also draw the crystal structures by using Vesta software. It was very much helpful for, it was very much helpful that I, we land this software. And also morphology, our human eye cannot detect more than 0.1 mm. To observe smaller objects, we go to optical microscope or electron diffraction, it's an electron microscope. Now, for composition analysis, we studied here various techniques like EDS, extra SRF, uh, XPS and this. But EDX and XRF are goes from boron to uranium. However, XPS and AES goes from lithium to 92. And only one technique seems which can go from hydrogen to uranium we can detect. So for a better example, we put that, uh, this was, uh, I copied from this journal, which was uh, means recently published on nanoscale. Uh, so we have, you can see here, we detect the composition and analysis of those materials. You can see this is only plates, this is only particles. So plates are W3 and this is SNO2. We vary the tin percentage and here we got this, here we got, you see the tin percentage the tunes. And this is the TM image, this is the SM, FSM images. The difference between TM and FSM is that here we are getting 3D, 3D structure, whereas in TM we are getting 2D structures. So anyway, for knowing the thermal stability of a material, we have to do TGDTA and uh, for optical properties or for band gap, we have to do uh, UV visible. So in the conclusion, uh, that we have successfully uh, uh, grown chocolate method, Bijvan techniques, uh, and also from Chokolatsky method is more suitable to grow high purity single crystals than Bridgman techniques. However, materials with high vapor pressure cannot be grown by this method. And Bridgman method is very simple compared to the Chokolatsky method, but materials is constant, is constantly in contact with the crucible of the sample board, which introduces mechanical stress that possibly changes ideal crystal structure. And we studied the preparation of nanomaterials by hydrothermal methods also. And also, we uh, means what we learned how to draw crystal structures and how to fit experimental data in XPS and Vesta software. We also understand the optical and thermal stability of the functional materials and to uh, how to improve their performance of our, de of our device making nanomaterials and single crystal heterostructures. Uh, uh, so, I first I would like to, we would like to express our sincere gratitude for, uh, to Professor Anpiraj. Well, we are acknowledging, 
Okay, any question? Thank you.